The Battle of Philippeville, also known as the Philippeville Massacre or the August Offensive was a series of raids launched on 20 August 1955 on various cities and towns of the Constantine region by FLN insurgents and armed mobs during the Algerian war between France and Algerian rebels. The raids, which mostly took the form of ethnic riots, resulted in the massacre, in extremely gruesome ways, of several dozens of European settlers known as Piennois. These massacres were then followed by very brutal and blind reprisals by the French army and Piennois vigilantes, which resulted in the death of several thousands native Algerians. The events of late August 1955 in the Constantinois region are considered to be a major turning point of the Algerian War. Chapter 1 Background The Algerian War had technically begun on 1 November 1954, when the FLN launched scores of scores of spectacular attacks. The conflict began to escalate, as evidenced by the remarks of the Socialist Minister of the Interior, François Mitterrand, I will not agree to negotiate with the enemies of the homeland. The only negotiation is war. The French adopted an increasingly aggressive policy in Algeria, and in early March 1955 the French government of Prime Minister Pierre Mendes France was replaced by that of Edgar Faure. By summer 1955, the steady pressure of French counter-insurgency had put the FLN in a very dire situation. Only in Walea too was the insurgency in a shape to mount any offensive. Popular support was still rather low and many among the Algerian Muslim elite still advocated for a peaceful resolution of the conflict through conciliatory agreements with the French government. To break out of this bad situation, Youssef Zighoud, leader of the Walaya II and one of the most radical elements among FLN leaders, took the decision to conduce a dreadful massacre on Piennois civilians, with the hope that bloody French retaliations would irremediably break the fragile bond between French colonists and native Algerians, and thus increase the popular support for the rebellion as well as destroy any possibility for a conciliatory settlement of the conflict. General Osiris is knew that the FLN was planning something when one of his informers, an Arab baker in Philippeville, told him that he had used to sell on average a sack of flour every three days, but was now selling two tons of flour every day to men whom he did not know and who paid only cash. From this, Osiris is deduced that the spike in flour sales must have been because the FLN was concentrating men in the hills above Philippeville, which could only mean an operation was due to start soon. Chapter 2 FLN's Attack On 20 August 1955, a few hundreds FLN regulars gathered mobs of several thousands native peasants they had radicalized with religious and racial hatred as well as with reassuring deliberate lies, such as a hoax about an imminent landing by Egyptian armed forces that would save them from the wrath of French retaliations, and directed them toward various settlements of the Contantinois area in a series of coordinated raids. Chapter 2 Section 1, Raid on Philippeville the main attack was conducted on the city of Philippeville, now known as Skikta. A large mob of several thousand civilians lead by FLN regulars launched a general assault on the city, with the aim to kill Europeans, kill some moderate Muslim personalities and take over the police station's weaponry. Only half of the insurgents were armed with firearms, while the rest wielding farming tools, knives or makeshift bombs device. As the mob arrived in the city, Europeans in the streets were murdered on sight. However, the reaction of police forces and French army paratroopers was swift and the insurrection was soon defeated, for lossy of only 14 dead policemen. Once the assault was over, over a hundred of insurgents were lying dead in the streets, while many more had been captured by French forces. Chapter 2 Section 2 El Halia Mine Massacre the most heinous massacre of the day occurred at the El Halia Pyrite mining town, where about 130 Europeans and 2,000 Muslims lived and worked together. The mob was essentially composed of hundreds of native peasants, both men and women, mostly armed with farming tools, axes, sharpened shovels, or knives, and was led by 25 FLN regulars. They arrived near 11 a.m., when most of the men were working in the mine while women and children were at home. A bloody massacre ensued, as European women were raped and disemboweled or decapitated, 
children had their throats slit and babies were slammed against walls until their heads caved in. Some of the local Muslim inhabitants who had initially watched without reacting eventually joined the excited mob, as it massacred Europeans under chants of Allah Akbar that blended with Algerian women's ululations. Thirty-seven Europeans, mostly women and children, were murdered in the attack. Chapter 2 Section 3 Attack on El Karoub Military Outpost Near El Karoub, a mob of a few hundreds alarmed native civilians, including women and children, lead by a few FLN regulars, launched an assault on a French military outpost held by 150 soldiers. Their goal was to kill the garrison in order to take over the heavy weapons and ammunition stock. The attack was repulsed without any French casualties, while 12 uniform-wearing FLN regulars, 15 civilian men, 19 women and 11 children or teenagers were killed among the attackers. Chapter 2 Section 4 Terror Attacks in Constantine In Constantine, eight FLN commandos of about 10 men each launched a series of terror attacks on a number of specific targets. Allah Abbas, nephew of Ferhat Abbas and moderate local politician, who advocated for conciliation with the French government, was murdered in the pharmacy he owned. Sheriff Hodge said, another prominent moderate politician, was shot as well but survived. Local police inspector Robert Lemel, was assassinated in front of a cafe. Grenades were thrown at a police station, and a movie theater and a restaurant were bombed. Several bombs exploded in the Jewish area of the city, killing two and wounding dozens. Chapter 2 Section 5 Other Attacks Smaller-scale attacks on Europeans also took place in various villages of the region. In Ain Abid, Bernadette Mello, a five-days-old newborn, was cut into pieces in front of her mother whose belly then was opened to stuff the pieces back inside. In Ramdon Jamal, thirteen Europeans, among which three children, were murdered. In Kolo, four policemen and six European civilians were killed. The car of a Jewish family was stopped by the mob on a road near Ramdon Jamal. Haim Ben Chetrit was forcibly pulled out of the vehicle, before being castrated and made choke to death with his own genitals in front of his wife and their three children, aged eleven, five and three, who were then butchered with axes by the frenzied crowd. Chapter 3 French Retaliation After the initial shock of the attacks, the bloody French reprisals began. A high number of Algerian men arrested during or after the attacks were executed without being tried. When French paratroopers arrived at El Halia a few hours after the attack, they rounded up about 80 Algerian men present on the site and shot them without any further investigation. At El Karoub, 60 insurgents captured during the attack were shot on the same day, while many or men were arrested based on mere suspicions and shot in the following days. In the following days, several shepherd villages, suspected to be harboring FLN members or to have taken part in the attacks, were raised by the French Air Force. The total death toll of the French reprisals is uncertain but just like at Satif ten years earlier, the number of Algerians killed in retaliation for initial massacre of Europeans was vastly disproportionate. French anti-colonial militant, Daniel Guerin estimated the number of men executed in Philippeville proper at 2000. A French military report gave a number of 750 men executed just for the El Harouch area. Chapter 3 Section 1, Philippeville Stadium Scandal In Philippeville, the city's stadium was turned into a gigantic interrogation center by the French army. Thousands of native Algerian men captured during the assault were briefly interrogated before being shot without any proper investigation or trial to determine whether they were guilty or not. Due to the very specific characteristics of the assault, the French army had broadly captured a vast amount of native Algerian men present in the streets during the attack, without attempting to distinguish uninvolved inhabitants from insurged mobsters, and thus many innocents were executed alongside the guilty, in the blind repression. French reporter Robert Lambote notoriously took a photograph depicting the lined-up bodies of executed Algerians in the stadium, and published it in the newspaper L'Humanité, sparking national outrage in France.
Chapter 3 Section 2, Pienoir Vigilante Reprisals Shocked and enraged by the horrendous atrocities inflicted upon their kind, some of the Pienoir began forming vigilante militias. The mayor of Philippe Paul Dominique Benquet Cravox armed the militias, which soon started exercing blind reprisals upon native Algerians, killing dozens. After the funerals of the victims ended, seven Algerians were lynched in the streets. The fact some of the anti-European atrocities had been committed by trusted Muslim neighbors, with whom the victims had lived for years, created great amount of paranoia among the Pienois community, which started seeing every Muslim as a potential attacker. Constantly fearing for their safety, armed vigilantes fired at any Muslim whose behavior they deemed suspicious, killing or wounding many innocents. The paranoia eventually reached such a high level that a group of Pienois vigilantes got involved in a firefight with French soldiers they had mistaken for FLN rebels, which prompted French authorities to start disarming vigilantes. Chapter 4, Death Toll The total death toll of the late August Constantinois violences is uncertain. On the day of the attacks, French authorities gave an official figure of 71 European civilians and 21 native Algerian civilians and 31 law enforcement officers killed by insurgents during the FLN's attacks. However, many survivors were severely wounded or maimed, and some later died of their wounds. Historian Roger V. Tillard gave a total figure of 117 European civilians, 42 Algerian civilians and 47 law enforcers who ultimately died as a result of the 20th of August FLN's attacks. The death toll of French retaliations remains heavily disputed. French authorities gave an official figure of 1,273 native Algerians killed, which is widely considered to be underestimated. The FLN claimed that as many as 12,000 were killed by French repression. French historian and colonial Algeria specialist Charles Robert Ageron estimated the number of native Algerians killed as a result of French retaliations to be between 3,000 and 5,000. Chapter 5, Aftermath The events of 20 August 1955 are widely considered to be a major turning point in the Algerian War. Just like Zigaud had intended, the massacre of the Pienoir, followed by the violent French reprisals, had created an irreparable divide between the European and the native communities. The peaceful Third Way was no longer an option, and many former moderates on both sides ended up forced to choose unambiguous positions. As such, the operation was thus considered a great success by Zighaud despite the failure to take over the much-needed weapons of the targeted military outposts and police stations, and despite the relatively small number of Europeans killed in comparison to the Algerian death toll. Despite the undeniable political success of the operation, Zigaud's cynical disregard for Algerian lives was frowned upon by several high ranking members of the FLN. Abon Aram Don and Labi Ben Mahidi notably criticized his decision to send barely armed Algerian civilians with almost no weapon to a certain death or a result of less than 100 Europeans killed. Ramdon also condemned the murder and mutilation of European babies, which he feared would cause the revolution to be associated with fanatical madness, and decrease international support for the cause of Algerian independence. Three weeks after the event, a group of 61 prominent Algerian Muslim politicians, who had thus far adopted moderate positions and who used to believe it was possible for Algerians to become French by adopting the French language wrote a public declaration condemning the blind repression in Philippeville, declared the French government's policy of integration of Algerian Muslims to be a failure, and wrote that, in the wake of the blind and bloody repression against Muslims in Philippeville, the vast majority of Algerians had become nationalists who now believed in the Idée Nationale Algérienne. By late 1955, the number of FLN fighters in the Constantine region had increased by a threefold. Jacques Saustel, the recently appointed governor of Algeria, who had thus far defended conciliatory approach on Algerian nationalism, was profoundly traumatized by his visit at the El Halia mine after the attacks. After the events of late August 1955, he became convinced that no negotiation was possible with FLN terrorists, 
and would keep getting increasingly radicalized as the war progressed. French Pienois intellectual Albert Camus, who had written several articles to bring attention on the condition of native Algerians, was appalled by the horrific massacre of European children, and completely rejected the FLN as terrorists. As he later wrote, if I can understand and admire freedom fighters, I have only discussed for murderers of women and children. After August 1955, the brutality of the Algerian war dramatically increased in intensity, and atrocities on both sides became commonplace as FLN rebels and the French army got more and more radicalized.